Welcome to the WordPress Photography Podcast, the podcast for photographers who want to learn how to get the most out of WordPress to grow their photography business. You don't need to be a geek to understand WordPress. Settle back and listen as we show you how. Now, here's your host, Scott wyden Kivowitz. Welcome to Episode 5. My name is Scott wyden Kivowitz, and I'm joined by my co-host, Rachel, from Photoscribe. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Scott. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Episode 5. This is very exciting. Yes. Uh, so we, uh, we, we took a little bit of a break before uh, doing Episode 5 because we wanted to get it out on iTunes and all the fun podcast channels. So... Um, it is now available on on iTunes and Stitcher and uh, many. Google. It's ready. It's already pre-approved for Google Play. They haven't launched their podcast network yet, but it's coming. They said end of January, 2016. So uh, hopefully we are pre-approved and we'll be there once that launches. Then it'll be linked on the site with the others. Okay. Um, so today we've got a very exciting guest, mm -hmm. or I should say guests, plural. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> um, Jeff and Aaron Youngren are joining us today, and they're all the way from rainy San Diego, California. <laughs> um, it's uh, really early, almost 8 a.m. their time, right? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. It is. So, right. uh, early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they literally just got up. Um, they're a... <laughs> but they look good. <laughs> they do look good, yeah. How do they, they roll out of bed and look like that? Um, it's normal. Yeah. Not friends. <laughs> the Youngmans are a luxury husband and wife wedding photography team. They started the photography business a few months after getting married and continue to enjoy their own love as they photograph other couples' weddings. Take a look at their website and you will see beautiful wedding photograph uh, photographs and you will also see... Uh, just how passionate Jeff and Aaron are, not only about photography, but also each other. Their website runs on WordPress, and Jeff loves digging into conversations about it. So Rachel and I are extremely excited to have both of them here on the show. Welcome, guys. Oh, thanks so much for having us. We've been really looking forward to this, and, uh, you know, thanks for making time for us. Yeah, and we should sure. mention that you have more than one website on WordPress, so we'll get into all of that as well. Okay, great. Perfect. Cool. Um, so before we get into really what's going on with you, we'd like to start out with a little bit of news. And up until yesterday, I actually didn't have any news because there was really nothing related out. And then all of a sudden, WordPress pushed out a new version. It's 4.4.1. And this is actually, um, normally I may not talk about minor point releases, basically like 4.4.1 being a point release. I don't think I would normally bring that up as a WordPress news. But this is an important one. It's a minor update, but it's a, it's a one that's safe to do without worrying about anything breaking because of how minor it is. But it's also an important update that every photographer should do because it has a, a little bit of a security fix in it as well as uh, a fix, fixes related to any sites running SSL, you know, the little lock that shows on the top of the site. So if you have SSL on your site, um, you're going to want to do this as well as do this anyway because of security. There's also about 50 other minor fixes, but uh, either way, we always recommend running a full website backup prior to <laughs> updating, but you definitely should do this update. If not, automatic, which is, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, a lot of hosts will automatically update your site for you uh, when it's something as important as this. So there yeah. you go. So do it. We always recommend kind of waiting for some of the major up upgrades, like 4.4. You know, if you wait a week, then if things break, they fix it. Um, but because 4.4.1 is this, like what do you, the security, we we say go ahead and do it. So yes. that we're giving you permission, but do backup. <laughs> yes, do a backup. <laughs> so um, that's our PSA for the day. Yes, yes. This has been a broadcast message. Yeah. Um, so, Aaron and Jeff, um, besides from the torrential downpours that you've been getting for a few days or whatever, however long and whatnot it's been in your area, what's going on with you guys? Yeah, it's been a really, really exciting time here in San Diego. Um, <laughs> we are we're very excited for this new year, and we are recording this at the beginning of 2016. It's there's a lot of really cool stuff that's going to be happening this year. I think for a lot of photographers, it's really exciting. So we're in that same mode of just really looking forward to everything that we, we want to do this year. So it's going yeah. to be a really great, really great time. And we're excited to, to hang out with you guys. 
Yes. Well, thank you. And, and Aaron, you do a lot of the content creation for your brands, and Jeff handles sort of the technical back end stuff. So you guys have a really good partnership sort of within your WordPress structure. How does that work for you? Oh, it works wonderfully for me. <laughs> 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 we, we are very, very lucky, and we don't take that for granted because I know that a lot of photographers, they're a one-man show, and they don't have the kind of support that Jeff and I get to share. So that's, that's a huge advantage that we have, and our strengths are very different from one another. So yeah. if you are a wedding photography couple that shoots together, um, it is so helpful when you guys identify your different strengths and you work in those different strengths. And this is just one example of yeah. that because I love writing. I'm really good at content. Um, I was a literature major and that just plays right to my strengths is creating that content. And then Jeff is, um, like you said, he's very techy and he's very good at that. And so right away we identified that and said, you know what, this is how we're splitting up our roles. You're in charge of this. I'm in charge of this, and when we live in those strengths, then our business runs very smoothly. And we do that throughout our business, not just when it comes to the websites. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, this is a very tangible proof of it, but I love that you have that in all different aspects of your business. Definitely. It helps us work together very well, very yeah. smoothly. <laughs> And it's really fun for me. I mean, I mean, like Aaron is being very kind. Oh, he's very technical. I'm just a big geek. Right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> you know, it's, let's just call it what it is. Yeah. But I wasn't going to say the word, but that's what I was thinking. <laughs> hey, let's just let's just name it. But um, you know, I get to I get to play around with our websites and think of different things. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to make a cool box that does this. And then I just write some kindergarten text. And then Aaron comes through and cleans it up and makes it pretty and wonderful. And, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, like um, an adult. And um, so it's a really great partnership. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. We should dive in. You have more than one brand. So how do you um, manage that in your business and then from a website point of view? Yeah, so question. the basic structure of our business is, is that we have the Youngrens, which is Jeff and myself, and we've been shooting together and we shoot weddings. That's all that we do, weddings and engagements. Yep. We've been doing that since we got married, and that was almost 10 years ago. Wow. We are celebrating crazy. our 10-year anniversary next year, and I congrats. It's crazy. I can't believe it's already it's already gotten to that point. But we've been shooting weddings together that whole time. And a couple of years ago, we wanted to expand into a couple of different um, different studios. And so we expanded into one that's called Clove and Kin. It's Clove like the spice and Kin like family. Mm -hmm. And this brand is a lower um, mid range photography brand. They do weddings and portraits with multiple photographers, but the feel is very similar to the younger ends in yep. style, in heart. And in the um, and in the way that the photographers approach the day, yeah. And then we also purchased another studio called Bauman Photographers. You might recognize the name Bauman from yeah. <laughs> your guest in episode four. Yeah. But um, this is a commercial studio, so it does a lot of commercial work, headshots, corporate events, product photography, and so we have the different websites for all three of our different brands, and we use WordPress for all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Jeff, let's geek out. So you do you have a multi-site install or three separate sites? And I want to let Scott talk about some of the multi-site stuff, too. Cause <laughs> you, know, you know, this is really fun. Um, <laughs> I, I have gone back and forth on multi-site. Back, back and forth, back and forth. And ultimately, we don't have any multi-site installations. Okay. What I can tell you is that we have nine WordPress installations. Wow. So, like, um, like is it nine? Maybe it's eight. Well, it's it's eight or nine WordPress installations. It's with, more than uh, most people. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, just to have these different these sites that I like them to look the same, but I like them to have different functionality in these different areas. Yeah. So, like for for example, just a simple example is with the Youngrens. We have our wedding site, and then we also have our photography resource site. I didn't want to have just a tab on our wedding site that pulled in all this photographer content because I didn't want this the the searching to get messed up the SEO to get messed up yep. with people having um, conflict as far as what they're looking for and so we have a separate install for weddings and a separate install for photographers and then like with bomb and photographers we have actually an install for um, like the landing page blog we have an install for weddings we have an install for commercial so lots of WordPress installations um, as you can see why I've kind of gone back and forth on multi-site yeah ultimately. I haven't jumped off that cliff yet. Yeah. So, so from 
from my perspective, uh, listening to that structure, um, it actually would be beneficial for the younger insight to be a multi-site. Um, and I'll, I'll come back in a second, but then also having Bauman photographers also being a multi-site, but separate multi-sites, right? Um, and the reason why it'd be beneficial is you have one WordPress site for each to maintain, but you are keeping all the content and design and potential functionality different between individual sites in the multi-site. Now, maybe we should break it down for some of our listeners about what exactly yep. a multi-site is. Yep, so a, a multi-site is basically um, a WordPress instance where you could have sub-sites uh, that are all controlled by one login, uh, if you want. One master, super. it's actually the admin becomes a super admin, and then there's an admin, and then there's the editor, all the different roles below it. Um, the super admin can control every single site in this network. And then um, all the content is separated. You can actually have a, su a site, a subsite of the multi-site be a subdomain or a subfolder. Right. So, for example, um, you could have um, uh, photographers.myphotography.com or you could have myphotography.com slash photographers. Yeah. Either or. Uh, can be the subsite, and then uh, you could have weddings.myphotography.com or myphotography.com slash weddings. So there's a variety of different things you could do. Separating content is key, um, but the the advantage is basically simplicity of maintenance. The disadvantage is multi-site is not perfect. Um, it's right. a little buggy. Not every plugin or theme works with multi-site, so there is risk of certain things not not working. The way you See, might. I hear this, and I love WordPress, and I think like, wow, that's too complicated. Even for someone who loves WordPress, but and I yeah. know Jeff. I mean, the big point of we love having both of you guys on because you have that perspective of both the content and that really like. I think Jeff, you've tried this. So, what mm -hmm. has been your experience in having the eights on multi sites and then having the eights be separate, and how do you manage that? Well, I mean, yeah, like, like like Scott said, the real only big disadvantage that I was finding with multi-site was just the compatibility issues, and I just didn't want to be dealing with it. It's nice yeah. with how, like, um, you know, cutting edge the, the main WordPress install is and how they're moving that forward so much faster. But um, what the way I get around it is I use, this, I use a service called Manage WP. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Yep. But... Um, so what what I what you can do is you can add all your sites to this service, and then I can log into my Manage WP account, and I can see all my sites in in, in very similar way to what Scott's talking about, where I can go and I can click on the different sites, and it can just open the admin window right there in that site. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and then like like you know with this update that just came out, I can actually go in and it'll say, hey, you have like nine instances. Do you want me to upgrade them all? And you just push update, and it takes. 15 seconds, and it just flips through, and it just updates all of them. Yep. Same with plugins. I run all my backups through Manage WP, so mm -hmm. it's taking my backups, and it's making nightly backups, it's making weekly backups and monthly backups, and it's saving them to my FTP server So of, of all the sites. And so, so that's kind of my way of getting around it. <laughs> so that's not a multi-site installation. That is actually like a third-party service that allows you to do everything in one place. That's interesting. I didn't actually know that distinction. Yeah. yeah. Manage WP has a lot of cool uh, features as well. Like you could have added security, and you could have a, uh, uh, SEO services built in. You know, depending on the plan, there's a they're pretty they're pretty uh, pretty sweet. Uh, it's managewp.com. Um, now, can I, can I ask Aaron a question about this? When you're creating content for all of these different sites, do you also use that, or do you log into each separate site depending on what you're creating content for? We log into each separate site, and for me, I'm creating content for the younger ends and for the younger ends photographers, and so right. that's where my content is focused. And then we have people on our team, and then we have also used Photoscribe for content <laughs> for uh, for our other sites, and so. We do have the separate logins, but since we do have separate people that are managing that those content channels, um, it hasn't seemed to be a problem with the with the multiple logins. So, yeah. um, so it's worked out pretty well for us. 
Great. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think like what a photographer would think in terms of, you know, if they were starting to offer their photography site and then something maybe for photographers like you have on the Youngren brand, what they could use to help make it a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, the, the, it's, it, uh, it definitely would be easier for the average photographer to just have separate instances. Yep. Um, for for people that that are advanced that um, uh, really want s simplicity, um, I I do think multi-site is the way to go. It's just you do have that risk that we talked about. So. Yeah. But, so Jeff, where do you go when you do have questions for like w to learn more about WordPress or to geek out? You know. <laughs> yeah. So there's this um, service that it's free, and um, it's called Google, and I just go to it. <laughs> And uh, no, I mean really? that, that, is, that is what I do. Um, I'll just start googling things. But um, you know, lately, so we switched over our Youngren's site to a theme made by Theme Co. The X theme. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. And um, we switched over to that right when it was kind of gaining a lot of momentum. And since then, um, there's been a great community that's kind of been built around it. And so there's a forum that I go to and get a lot of my geeky questions answered. It's like a fellow geek squad hanging out in there. That's um, awesome. That's actually a really good suggestion for photographers. Wherever your theme is, is there there usually is a community if it's a well-maintained theme. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we got rid of our, our, our forum uh, because people were treating it um, differently than just a community. For um, photocratic, you mean? Yeah. So... Okay. Uh, so not all themes will have one, but uh, there is a WordPress for Photographers Facebook group <laughs> that I would recommend. Um, that uh, that I, it's a it's a group that I maintain. Um, shameless plug. Yeah. Shameless plug. Um, so I, you know, yeah. If 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 a product that you purchase has a forum um, where there's like-minded people that are using the same product you are, then that's definitely a great source to uh, to a great avenue or venue to uh, to take for for finding information. But I love the different perspectives that you know we all kind of bring to the table because I'm with Jeff. Like I go to the source almost for if something breaks because who else would I ask besides Google, of course. Um, <laughs> but you really, it's like your mileage may vary depending on what theme you choose for which product. Now, do you have different themes for all of your sites? Yeah, so um, both Bauman photographers and Clove and Kin are all running off of the, the Pro Photo Blogs theme. Yep. And we're in the process of switching um, a lot of Bauman over to the X theme. I'm kind of just in love with it. Yeah. Um, and then the Young Runes, like I said, is on X. Clove and Kin is it's fine being on Pro Photo Blogs. I'm really excited. They're going to release a new update to it sometime soon, and it's supposed to be responsive. And I'm yeah. kind of my breath for that. So. <laughs> We'll see what happens, and that if that doesn't happen, there may be a change there too. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, there is, you know, with having multiple sites, there is something to be said for having the same theme across those sites, or at least the same framework across the sites, because yeah. there's so much language that you end up learning. Right. Even if it's, you know, you know, using like something like a Genesis platform with like different, like all the different child themes that you can use. Um, yeah. It, it having that same structure is, is really important. So like when I have to go and maintain stuff with Clove and Ken, I'm like switching gears completely because mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember how they approach different things so I'm not screwing up the total back end. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, it's a very, I mean, so X theme's taken a very modern WordPress development approach where Pro Photo theme where it hasn't been updated in a while, so it is a more uh, distant or outdated style of 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 system and development and yeah, so it is definitely a completely different mindset. Um, it's crazy want... how fast the whole WordPress development community moves. Like, oh yeah, yes. I mean, I'm I'm totally with you. And when, when you say like, yeah, Pro Photo hasn't been updated in a while, I think it's only been like a year. Yeah, yeah. but it feels like you're like, is that even a website anymore? Like, does that still work? Yeah, yeah. but that's what photographers struggle with. I, I work with a lot of clients on Pro Photo themes that have been on them for years just because they set it and they kind of forget it. They do their blog, they update their content, but they don't, you know, even WordPress, they'll update the the um, releases like we talked about at the beginning, but to change the theme is such a huge undertaking. You know, it's just something that isn't part of their day-to-day -day life. Um, 
So it, that's where I think the photography world and the WordPress world have major differences, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, and, uh, yeah, there's, there's certain things like um, including the gallery in the theme that used to be acceptable and now it's not, you know? So that's where, like, Photocratic theme used to, and now it doesn't. Now it uses Next Gen Gallery, Next Gen Pro instead. So it, it separated the content. So people who do want to change themes don't have to start all over again with making their um, portfolios look good. Right. Um, and Next so, Gen themes, we should or Next Gen plugin. You guys just hit like a million downloads too, right? Oh, so it's four, not just four, photographers. Four, Fourteen million downloads. Wow. Okay, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we have uh, 1.3 million users, uh, active users, 14 downloads, 14 million downloads over that total. Um, yeah, it's doing really well. Um, so there's obviously a need for that beyond photographers. So photographers yeah. should look at it for the strength of it because it sounds like 14 million people are using it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you can't be wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, no. so let's uh, let's talk about. Uh, Wedding photography websites specifically. Um, what are the top three things that you would say are must-have for a wedding photography website? If you're talking basics, then you definitely need you know your basic components. You need your portfolio, you need your bio page, and you need um, a contact form. So you just need to show your work. You need to tell people who you are, and then you need a way for them to contact you. And that's I mean that is your basic structure of a wedding photography website. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting how many times those three components get um, ignored, <laughs> especially when it comes to the contact portion of the site to the place where it's the actual call to action, the sales page of your website. And that tends to be the area that kind of gets left to the side because you're so excited about your portfolio. You're so excited about your images and you're so excited about showing off your personality, writing your bio. It's very important. The about page is extremely important. But don't forget that contact page. Have all of your information. Have an email address on your contact form. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. don't just have the fill in the blank boxes, but yeah. actually have an email address and a phone number. Um, yeah. simple, simple little thing, but it gets forgotten a lot. And yeah. for uh, for anybody who is worried about having a email address in plain text, there are tricks if you Google it. Um, there are tricks. I'll see if I if I can find a a, a URL and tutorial to link to in the show notes. But there are tricks you can do to protect your email address from being just a copy paste spammer type of thing. So, right. um, well, even if you just type it out like Rachel and then the word at Photoscribe, which is who I am, um, mm -hmm. you know, just having that on the site so that if they don't want to fill it out, I mean, I've looked for photographers who I want to contact, who I have a relationship with on a thing like Facebook, but I didn't want to use the messenger, so I would go to their website and their contact form and be like, I just need to email. It. I'll type it out, you know. Um, the other thing that I notice for contact pages, and, and Aaron, you sort of mentioned this, is mention your local area. Where are you shooting weddings? Because sometimes I'll go to a photographer and I'll be like, wait, where do they live? Yep. You know? In fact, it's actually really good for, uh, search, for search engine optimization to include a Google map of where oh. you are. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. That's like, a great idea. Like just yeah. embedding an actual Google map, so that's... That's yeah, so so um, you guys have an actual studio somewhere, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So if you pinpoint that and embed that map with the with the pinpoint of where your studio is, and include that on your contact page with your address and whatnot, Google is going to like that, and it it help, It's not like a big jump in SEO, but it helps. That's interesting. I've with seen that on Facebook more too. What was that? I've seen that on Facebook more too. That you can have that map functionality on your Facebook business page. Yep. Um, so I think they're trying to roll that out. Yeah. So so here's a question. Portfolio, <laughs> bio page, and contact. Super yeah. important for every wedding photographer. Yeah. What about the blog? I think it's very important to you for your SEO, but it's also just important for your brand. And I, you know, I've been working a lot on um, systems and coaching photographers and building systems in their business. And for a lot of photographers, or at least for, you know, just a lot of people in general, they're not as systems minded as I am. I, that's the thing that I geek out on is yeah. systems and how to optimize my workflows and make things easier on myself yeah. and turn around a really great product. And what I tell them is that, you know, if you're not excited about systems, get excited about your brand because yeah. 
systems are how you are going to build the most powerful brand the fastest. Mm -hmm. So when you are able to deliver a consistent product over and over and over again, then you are sending a message every time you post to your blog. You're sending a message every time you show your images. And so that is how you're going to build a really strong brand and how you're going to build it very quickly. And so that's what a blog does for you. It gets your message out there on a regular basis. It shows people that you are in demand, that you're working a lot, and that other people are hiring you. And so it's important to, to show your work, to show what you're doing, and it's important to create content for that blog. Mm -hmm. And that's tough for photographers to come yeah. up with that content. That's probably the biggest challenge. Yeah. I know you use the Photoscribe for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, if only we knew somebody could help photographers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there is. I know. That help with all this. Well, thank you, guys. No, and I, now, do you do it on a, you talked about systems, and I saw your Creative Live, your sec, the section of Jared Bauman's Creative Live class, and I was like, I just want to hang out with them. They talk WordPress, <laughs> they talk systems. Um, <laughs> So for your blog system, for the Youngren's brand, which you write, do you um, do you do it on a schedule? Do you do, like, what is your consistent system for that? Yeah, so we do have an editorial calendar, which is very important. And I know that um, you guys have talked about this before, but I just can't emphasize enough how important it is to build that editorial calendar because that's going to help you immensely in planning ahead for these blog posts. Mm -hmm. So where it becomes really overwhelming and you experience that just sinking feeling is when you realize that you need to post a blog that day yeah. but you have to plan for it and you sit down at your computer and it's this blank screen and you're thinking what in the world am I going to do but I have this pressure because I need to post something okay. and when you can get yourself out of that cycle and get yourself out of that point then you can become a really powerful blogger. And so the easiest way to do that is with a calendar. And this is the perfect time of year to do it. It's the beginning of the year. New Year's resolution. Yep. <laughs> good. It's easy. It's January. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you can plan out um, the next, you know, the next three months. Do it quarter by quarter. You know, that's usually a great little chunk of time that you can think about and you can really plan for. So look at the shoots that you already have. And really, there's so many pieces of um, software. There's so many apps that you can use. We like CoSchedule. We use a mix of CoSchedule and Asana. Yep. And um, between those two, I'm able to manage our editorial calendar. And actually, I manage it for all three. And that way, I can plan out what I'm doing. So I take a look at all the shoots that I already have lined up, any weddings, engagements, any different sessions. And I put those on the calendar, and I assign tasks for what needs to happen for each one of those, when the images need to be worked on. Um, we use Blogstomp for prepping our images for the blog and that um, that simplifies the process a lot and makes it very quick and easy. Yeah. So that's a huge time saver is using a service like Blogstomp. And then I have all those tasks associated with these blog posts and so that helps me plan ahead so I'm not waiting until the last minute for all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the middle of all those shoots, if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of shoots to blog, then that it's that additional content that can be really difficult and overwhelming to come up with. But there's a few things you can do. One, you're a photographer um, and you, you sell products, right? <laughs> so get some sample albums, get some sample prints, whatever it is that you're selling. If it's framed prints, if it's portrait albums, we sell a lot of wedding albums. Um, write articles about those, and that's going to help you sell a lot more of them. If you I love that you blog. Not to, I just interrupt because I love that you blog about your albums because I don't see that a lot. But it's it's a very simple blog. Yeah, you don't see it a lot, and and I do talk to a, quite a few photographers who have difficulty selling albums. And if you're not showing them, you're not going to sell them. Yeah. You know, and they are expensive, and you do have to charge a good amount for them. But you you need to make them look like they are worth that value, which they are. Yeah. So if you take beautiful pictures of them, and that's really fun, you get to style it, you get to you know, do all <laughs> yeah, these fun pictures of, <laughs> of your albums, then post them on your blog, and that's something you can do regularly. So we post a blog for every album that we deliver to a client, and that tells future clients that, look, when you hire us, you're probably going to buy a wedding album. So they're prepared for it. I built that credibility ahead of time. Yeah. And then the next easiest thing to talk about is different, you know, helpful tips and tricks and, um, 
you know, different ideas for helping them out with their wedding planning, helping them out with their portrait session, how to make the most of your wedding photography, what to wear during a portrait session. Those are very simple and easy. And every photographer can do them. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Everyone can write the exact same article and post it on their blog. No but problem. since we're all going after different clients, it's totally fine. Yeah, so I love that. If you go my blog and you can see all the articles I've written, I don't care if you copy them. I don't care if you just like say, hey, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that for my blog. Because we have different clients that we're going after. Well, maybe like don't copy and paste. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. But before we get too far away, we should talk more about CoSchedule, which lives within WordPress, and then Asana, which is outside, and then Blogstomp, which is um, an, a product you buy to collage your images. So there are sort of three different tools, uh, yeah. and only one lives in WordPress, but they all make it seamless. Well, right? CoSchedule, although you have a, a plug-in to control CoSchedule, it's actually a third-party service that is outside yeah. of WordPress as well. So yeah. um, basically what they're doing is they're uh, taking their outside service and sort of embedding it in your WordPress so you can do it, you can organize it within WordPress. But this is actually is a good segue um, into uh, guest recommended WordPress themes or plugins. We've already talked about some. Uh, X theme came up, um, mm -hmm. which you're you've con converted uh, two sites to. You said I think. Right. Yes, two and, and two more sites. Now. Yeah. So um, uh, and then uh, co schedule, which we're talking about now, which happened to also be. Uh, recommendation in episode two. Um, so and four, I think Jared yeah. talked about it too. It's definitely getting, and I just saw CoSchedule now has integration with Evernote and and Google Docs. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually, um, so any photographers who take notes in Evernote or write stuff up in Google Google Docs, you can now import. Depending on your plan, you can now import the content directly into a blog post. Um, yeah, easily. So, which I love that for the Evernote portion of it because you know you're you can be in sitting on a train or in traffic and well maybe not driving, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and um, you know do something in Evernote and then know that it's just seamlessly going to go into WordPress. I thought yeah. that was brilliant. And and then on top of organizing in a calendar fashion your content, you can also schedule the social media stuff, which I think we talked about in the previous episode as well. Um, yes. So we'll link to 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 co schedule for anybody interested. Um, another that you have listed as a recommendation, which you talked about, was Manage WP, yep. um, which is fantastic. So we'll link to that as well for everybody to check that out. Then you had two others. Do you want to talk about the two others you had listed? Yeah, so I'll talk about Asana. Great. Um, or wait, no, we had other ones listed. Uh, Cloud, Cloudflare and... Well, I'll talk about Cloudflare. That's uber geeky. But um, <laughs> uh, before, we, before I do that, I do want to just mention with CoSchedule, Aaron and I went back and forth on CoSchedule for a while because we're like... Do we need another thing we're paying for? Yeah. yeah. Either, you know, it, everything is like $10, $20, $30 a month, everything. And it's like, um, do we need it? And we went back and forth on it, and it was a great investment and a great decision. Because, yep. I mean, there is free. I think there's a free version, but there's, there's some paid plans. Yeah. Um, yeah, the paid plans are really – I'm so glad you said that because I struggle with that too, yeah. both in the WordPress space and in the photography space. It's like, yes, it's only $10 a month, but when you have 10 of those, that's $100 a month. You know, yeah. So where do you put your money for some of these services? Well, and, and what's, one of the nice things about CoSchedule, um, before you move on, is that um, they just got acquired, and – the focus of the company who acquired them is still putting 100% focus on uh, CoSchedule. So there's going to be some really neat improvements and enhancements and things like that. Um, and they're very responsive to feature requests. I know that one of the ones that I requested when they first were in beta is in the works. Um, being able to automatically uh, set your social schedule with, it, with every new post instead of having to manually do it each time. Um, so that'll be really good. But uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, I'm all for co-schedule, even though it's a paid service. Fantastic. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, we do love it, and I think it it's really helped us out a lot with our photographer blog mostly. For if you only have your one blog and you're just doing weddings or you're just doing portraits, it's extremely helpful in in helping you with your editorial calendar. Yes, and when you create a blog post in CoSchedule, it create also creates it in WordPress and it helps you manage that process. And I really like that. And I like that you can schedule out, you know, Twitter, um, you know, tweets and all that kind of stuff yeah. with your blog post. That's awesome. Yeah. But if you are just have your one 
blog and you don't have the resources to spend money on another service, you know, Asana is a really great way to go. It's a yeah. free service. And we use it in our business for everything else that we do, a lot of our workflows um, and just basic to-do tasks and projects and that kind of thing. So it, it doubles up across your business with a lot of different things and there is calendaring functions in Asana and you yeah. can use that as well. So that's yeah. a free way to go. I love it a lot. It's a great service. I would use it anyways, even if not, even if you're not going to use it for an editorial calendar. I think it's wonderful. So that's a, that's something to do in case co-schedule is something that just doesn't make sense for your business right now. Yeah, I use Asana. I definitely I I, I second that. Um, and I'm thinking of doing an Asana course on how it does help the blogging. Um, do it. It's interesting because <laughs> do it. Um, <laughs> Because Code Schedule also has that editorial calendar and these other components, and it lives within WordPress. So if I'm in a client's blog and I'm creating a blog for them, I'll use Code Schedule. But for my own blogging, I really prefer Asana because I just have so much more control over that editorial calendar. But it does mean that you have to then manually do the tweets in the LinkedIn or, or find another plugin for it. So it's nice to know there are options. <laughs> yes. Asana is definitely the manual way to go for sure. So you have to you have to invest a little bit more time in it in order for it to be helpful. But I love it. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So we've we've got only we only have a few more minutes left. So let's. Okay, uh, well, we wanted to talk about Cloudflare and Frisbee. Yeah, so let's yeah, do that. Let's, let's get a little little geeky <laughs> with Cloudflare because this okay, is, I'm, this I'm, one's going to be a little bit more technical for most photographers, but uh, it'll be worth you know sharing about. So. Yeah, Cloudflare is, I think, a must-have for, for, for photographers. Um, it's, so what it is, it's a service that you, um, to get, without getting too technical into it, it's basically a CDN, a content delivery network. And um, the idea is, is that um, it caches your website in servers all over the world. And so when someone comes to your website, they're not um, having to retrieve that data from wherever your host is. They're getting to retrieve it from whatever server is closest to them with most of the content, not all the content. Um, but uh, Cloudflare does all kinds of things, not only just caching at the um, server level, but caching at the page level, um, combining your CSS, combining some things into, into like your JavaScript together so your page load times are quicker. Um, you, everybody's always read about how your fast, faster your site is, the happier Google is with it. Yeah. And so Cloudflare, Cloudflare really helps with that. Um, there's, I think there's a free version of the site. We have a paid version, but um, we have, but there's a, there should be a free plan. But they actually have a button you just click. We were talking about it earlier, Scott, where they, where not being afraid of putting your email address on your website, and um, you click a button that basically scrambles to uh, bots any email addresses that it can find on the site. Right. So not just on the contact page, you don't have to remember to encode anything. It's just you put an email address out there. You know, only only real people will be able to see it. Um, but yeah, it's just a it's just a great great service. And you can get that through your host sometimes, right, Scott? It doesn't. You don't. Yeah. Um, like SiteGround offers Cloudflare Cloudflare's uh, free plan included in their host for one yeah. year. But yeah. you have to set it up, right? I mean, you have to, like, turn it on, even though it's yeah. included. Yeah, in SiteGround, it's literally turn on Cloudflare, and they, they take care of the rest. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we, have, we use Bluehost as our host, and they, and they include it also, I think, for a time period. If, you, if your host doesn't include it, include it. The setup's actually relatively simple. Yeah. Um, if you're fine messing with your DNS... Um, <laughs> See, that, that scares me, and I know WordPress, so... <laughs> and a, a lot of hosts actually come with CDNs as well, so um, you don't... You don't need it if you already have a CDN, um, really, in my opinion. But uh, it could add extra layers. So it, it just just uh, if if you're interested in Cloudflare, make sure you check with your host and check with Cloudflare to see if you actually need it or if um, the host CDN will butt heads with Cloudflare. You don't well, want I, that to happen. I think that's a, a pretty good recommendation to all photographers. Like if you're really stuck, calling your host. Is, is always not, I mean, calling, chatting, whatever, reaching out to them is always an option. Because I talk to a lot of photographers, and they're like, well, what do I do? I don't know how to answer that question. And I'm like, well, call your host. Like, that's what they're there for. That's what you're paying them. You might get the runaround, but at least, you know, you're talking to someone. And, yeah. I don't and, know. That's and, what I recommend. If you're, if you're not getting help, uh, I recommend changing hosts. <laughs> oh, and then you go to Imagely, which is coming, and we're so excited about um, that. Um, but, uh, you know, Rachel and I were, were, had an email thread going back and forth yesterday where someone was not getting help from their host, and I was just like, 
why? Why? It, and it's not even like a, it wasn't even like a simple issue. It was a security issue. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really? Come on. Um, anyway, so so Frizzly. What the heck is Frizzly? Yeah, what, what's, with the, what's with the silly name? <laughs> well, okay, so I, I, um, Frizzly is just a plugin that we use. So, like, when you hover over any of our images, it pulls up the ability to put it on Pinterest or tweet it or, or share it on Facebook. And I just, I, I, I literally installed 15, 20 different plugins that do this exact same thing, going through them, trying to figure out which one I like the best. Mm -hmm. um, not only in terms of visually, but like how lightweight was it? Was it like making my, right. my site just crash, or what was, it, what was it doing to the speed? And I just fell in love with Frizzly. It was really easy to set up, but it's really <laughs> great, and we use it on all of our sites. It's our social, it's our social plugin. Nice. Um, and again, it's just, the, it's just the when you're scrolling through and you hover over an image. And you know you can have it say pin it or share on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just we just love, and it looks really clean. It has a flat design. Yeah, um, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, because I have one that just does pin Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like this does more than that. It does more than that, and when you get into like you know we we want everything to be so shareable as photographers, right. and you got to remember that the more plugins that you're loading to do different subsets of the same thing is gonna slow things down. Right. So loading a separate thing for Pinterest, loading a separate thing for Facebook, loading separate things for all this is just it's adding to the yeah. to the, um, to the server load and the page load time. And so if, when you can find stuff that can put it together, it's great. When you can find stuff like this social stuff that's built into a theme, even better. Right. Yeah. Is is Frizzly doing um, like share bars or floating share buttons uh, on posts and pages as well, or is it only doing image hover? I that I'd have to look at that. I, I looked at it for image hover. Um, there, there may be a thing that it does with the um, with the floating bar. I'm trying to find a floating bar I really like. Um, so uh, the one that I really love does both floating. Uh, it does it does like four or five different types, including image hover. Um, and it's uh, it's Monarch from Elegant Themes. Okay. Um, it's fantastic. Do you um, have to have an elegant theme to use it, or it can be used on all themes? I'm using all themes. So, like, I'm using it right now on my site, which is running the Photo Karate theme. Um, I use it on sites that run Genesis themes. It doesn't make a difference. I um, love this discussion because I didn't even think to do beyond the Pinterest hover on your image. You know, because there's so many other ways to, again, display that social sharing. So, to me, it's like image, then you have the pin, this, pin it button, but that's it right. for, in my mind. But I love that you have these different... Um, hover options on your images because as photographers that's what you're selling. Yep. Yep. Um, so uh, Jeff and Aaron, unless you had, do you have uh, any other last uh, minute um, recommendations you want to throw out there? <laughs> I know, the last minute. Well, um, we, we put together a, a, a PDF download, a guide for your listeners and so it's special for your listeners. It's You can get it at theyoungrins.com forward slash blogging tools. Thank you. And that'll be in our show notes as yes. well. Yes, it yeah. will. And so uh, if you go there, you can download this guide, and it's basically our five must-have tools that we use on our WordPress sites. And so you can get that as well in case, you know, you don't want to go back and rewind and re-listen to this podcast and you miss some of the things we were talking about. Yeah. You can get it all in one helpful guide just right there. Well, thank awesome. you. Thank you for doing that. Yes. Of course. Um, so, uh, in closing for me, uh, going back to the original news that I shared, um, by the time this, po this episode is published, 4.4.1 of WordPress would have already been out for about a week or two. So hopefully if you're watching this, you've already updated. But if you haven't, make sure you back up your site <laughs> and run the update. Um, so with that, uh, thank you, Aaron and Jeff, for joining us today, for getting up super early on your very rainy day. Yes. Um, Thank El Nino. You. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you for Rachel for being a uh, an awesome co-host as usual. And thank you Scott for being our great host and leader and fearless <laughs> leader. I yeah, know. Fearless leader. Um, you can find the show notes from today at imagely.com slash podcast slash five. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so much us. for having us, guys. It was really fun. <laughs> awesome. Yes. You've been listening to the WordPress Photography Podcast. To listen to other episodes and to subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and more, please visit imagely.com forward slash podcast.